Okay, so good afternoon, dear friends, dear Poland Forum members. This is our fourth meeting. I, our former meetings were very interesting and thank you all for being part and making so many efforts to be with, with us, even that you are so busy. Uh, our last two meetings are already on YouTube and I will send you soon the links. I would, all, I would like also to remind you that our next meeting will be a mini conference 30, um, 31st of May. It will be also our last meeting for this academic year. Uh, I would love to, you know, if everyone that uh, presenting something will send me a paper and then after the conference with Professor Judy Baumel Schwartz, we will think how we can make um, a, some a digital edition for you know collecting all the the subjects that you talked about and wrote about. Um, soon I will send you the program uh, which you can publish and invite your colleagues for the mini conference. Uh, the conference will deal with the subject of Holocaust and heroism between local and global. Today, we will have two lectures, uh, some kind of two lectures uh, uh, given by two members of the uh, Poland Forum. So thank you very much for uh, coming here and uh, uh, presenting your subject. I would like to introduce our lecturers today, Dr. Eva Wither is a scholar and a researcher at the Center for Jewish Research of the University of Lodge since 2006. The principal field of her scholarly activity is the history of World War II, especially the Lodge ghetto and the Holocaust in Poland. Currently, she works on her book about the Lodge ghetto community, focusing on everyday life as well as the survival strategy of its elements. Uh, during the work at the Center for Jewish Research, she's involved in many projects, such as the Lodge Ghetto Chronics, a volume, a five volumes, and the Encyclopedia of the Lodge Ghetto. She's also one of the editors, together with Adam Sitrek, which we will meet today, of David, I hope I pronounce good the names of David, Sirkovskis, Sirakoviak diary, as well as Rivka Lifshit diary, written in the Lodge Ghetto. The last project she's involved is the lexicon of Lodge Ghetto. And Dr. Adam Sitrek is academic teacher at the Center for Jewish Research, University of Lodge, tour guide at the Museum of the History of Polish Jews, uh, Pauline, a guide as the former Lodge ghetto area and memorial sites in Lodge, consultant of the new permanent ex exhibition in the Museum of Chelno, and advisor of the Litzmannstadt ghetto model project for the Rajasat station memorial in Lodge. Local activist working for commemoration of Jewish community in Lodge, and co-editor of a chronic of the Lodge Ghetto, Encyclopedia of Lodge Ghetto, Diary of David Sitorek, Diary of uh, Hen Henik uh, Fogel, Fogel, author of several articles published in the in Polish, English, and German on Lodge Ghetto, head of the project Lexicon of the Lodge Ghetto. Eva and Adam will present their projects and emphasize Lexicon of Lodge Ghetto. The floor is yours, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Lena said, I'm Adar Starek, and this is Eva Viat. We are from the Center for Jewish Research from Wuch University. And uh, it's very pleasure. It's a pleasure to uh, present you our project, Lexicon of the Uch uh, Ghetto. I thought we can begin with a short introduction uh, to the Center for Jewish Research, because you are not from Poland, maybe you are not familiar with our work. So uh, just five minutes short review what we are doing in the Center for Jewish uh, Research. Uh, please let me open the presentation. Okay. Uh, you can see that? It's okay? Can you see the presentation? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. Great. 
Uh, okay, uh, lexicon uh, of a Uchi ghetto is our uh, biggest and uh, our latest project, and uh, at the moment, at the moment, uh, but it's not our first uh, project uh, on the history of the Uchi, uh, of the Uchi ghetto. Uh, our center uh, was established in 2005 uh, in, in order to prepare the full edition of the Chronicle of the Uchi uh, ghetto. Uh, apart from this, from uh, for working editing the Chronicle of uh, uh, Uj Ghetto, we started to study history of uh, uh, Jews uh, from Uj. And the uh, uh, main areas of our research is the history of uh, Jews in Uj and the region in the late 19th and the uh, first half of the 20th century. So the this industrial period in the Uj, uh, history of Uj and the interwar period and of course, the history of the Second World War, history of the ghetto. And uh, <clears throat> what more? Do the specific of the uh, preserved documentation. We talked uh, about this with Lena before our uh, lecture. Uh, research, our research uh, is focused on the interwar history of the Jewish community and the history of, uh, uh, of course, of the Uch uh, ghetto. Uh, in Uch, in a state archive in Uch, we have a biggest collection of uh, documents uh, from the one specific ghetto in the world. Uh, so it's, it's about 1 million pages of documents from only which ghetto. Documents made by Jewish administration of a ghetto, but also the German administration of a ghetto. That's why we are starting to explore this huge, very interesting collection. And we are starting doing research on the history of a, a ghetto. And uh, as a research unit, unit uh, from the university, our center participates in the research projects with our partners from uh, Poland, from Europe, also from Israel and United States. Uh, but also we are uh, members in uh, several educational projects, uh, commemoration events and uh, knowledge dissemination initiatives. For example, a lot of kind of this, this kind of, uh, um, things. Uh, the center's employees, we have received several awards for our publication. You can see some of the awards just behind my back here, but it's not uh, uh, the important thing. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, this is just a screenshot of our Facebook page, but you can please uh, like it and maybe share our uh, different uh, posts and uh, projects. Okay, just let me, uh, please let me very shortly introduce our major projects. You can see the list of the projects, the Chronicle of the Uj Ghetto, the situation reports of the Uj Governor from 1938 uh, uh, the book of speeches uh, by Rumkowski from the Uj Ghetto, uh, edition of uh, four, more than 400 announcements uh, of the Rumkowski from the Uj Ghetto, uh, two years ago, we published it with a cooperation with Jewish Historical Institute in Warsaw and um, Encyclopedia of Uj Ghetto, and now uh, the biggest uh, project, the Lexicon of uh, Uj Ghetto. As and you can see, that yes, it's also translated to English or all in Polish. Uh, the Encyclopedia of Uj Ghetto is in English. But books of speeches, announcements, uh, reports of the Uch governor, uh, it's only in Polish, unfortunately. <laughs> the Chronicle of the Uch Ghetto is partly in English, but I will say that uh, in a few minutes later. Uh, as you can see, the ma vast majority of our projects uh, connects with the history of the Uch Ghetto. And uh, this is because of this documentation from the Uch Ghetto. And uh, this is the brief because the Chronicle of Uj Ghetto was our first, uh, first big project uh, connected with the history of the ghetto. And uh, I just want to show the brief uh, overview of this uh, project. Uh, on the, you can see the Chronicle of the Ghetto uh, is uh, five volumes, 41, 42, 43, 44, and the fifth volume supplements. All these five volumes has more than 2,700 pages. And uh, this is editorial project. So we 
based on the Bulletin Kroniki Codziennej. Uh, that was an official document published, published by the Jewish administration in the ghetto from the beginning of January 41 till the end of uh, July 44. We published uh, uh, the chronicle, five volumes of the Chronicle of the Ghetto with a cooperation with University of Gizen from Germany and state archives in uh, Łódź. Uh, this, uh, the chronicle uh, based on the three lingual Yiddish, German and Polish documentation from the uh, ghetto. On the fifth uh, volume, you can see, this is the edition of uh, the chronicle. Uh, the fifth volume uh, of a uh, chronicle, uh, we have placed a kind of appendix called the lexicon. And, uh, and that's how it started. Uh, how the idea to organize a knowledge about the Wuji Ghetto was born. And uh, we have developed this idea in our uh, next project, second big project, called the Encyclopedia of a uh, Ghetto. And a few years later, we developed this project in our recent project called Lexicon of the Wuji Ghetto. Here you can see just uh, the uh, covers of the German edition of the Chronicle and Hebrew edition from 80s and some of our uh, publications. Uh, the uh, Rumkowski speeches, the David Sierakovak diary, Rivka Lipschitz diary, and the last number of uh, uh, annual uh, Zagłada Żydów Studia uh, i Materiały. We are cooperating uh, with uh, our partners from the uh, Centrum Badań nad Zagładą Żydów from uh, Warsaw. And our uh, series of books uh, from the series Judaika Łódzkie. So, uh, for example, anthology of uh, literature from the Łódź uh, ghetto. And this is the covers of the, these are the covers from the, uh, of the Encyclopedia uh, of Łódź Ghetto, the Polish edition on the left side and the English edition on the right side. And uh, Eva will introduce you to the, this project. Eva, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam, for the first part of this presentation. Uh, maybe one uh, remark, uh, in the covers of the encyclopedia. Please enlarge the, the, uh, the presentation. Enlarge. Enlarge, yes, make it bigger. Can you Thank you. Adam? It's a full screen in my computer. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Ewa, na dole masz taki ekran tutaj po prawej stronie powinnaś mieć. Jak widzisz swoją prezentację, to po prawej stronie masz strzałkę do, znaczy masz plus, minus, a po lewej stronie jest taki ekran. Jak na to klikniesz, to tam chyba po prostu otworzysz to na całym ekranie. Albo F5 trzeba Adam, ty to ma... teraz działa. Tak, bo to ty rządzisz. Ty rządzisz w końcu, czy ja rządzę? Ja rządzę, okej. Okay. Okay, so Adam, is, Adam is in charge of the presentation. <laughs> so, seeing the cover, Thank you, Adam. the Polish and the English version of Encyclopedia, only one remark on one, one information for you. Uh, we decided to put the English version of Encyclopedia online already. Uh, it is available on the uh, website of academia.edu. And also, if you wish uh, to receive the PDF version, just write to us and we'll be happy to send you. Uh, this is the only way to, to, to distribute the, 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 uh, this uh, book uh, among the scholars. Uh, so now the, the main question, what is it? What is it, the Encyclopedia of Woods Ghetto and why we are talking about it so many times? and why it's so important. So we can have the second slide, Adam, if you could change it. Okay, Encyclopedia of the Ghetto, the basic information. Mm, I must say it is um, the material which still surprised me. Uh, and I still think that this is underestimated uh, because this is very unique material, probably not comparable to any other materials which was uh, written in the ghettos uh, during the war or in other communities, Jewish communities under the occupation. 
the project was carried out uh, within the ghetto archive department, one of the Jewish uh, one uh, of the Jewish uh, part of the Jewish administration of the ghetto, and it started the idea of uh, preparing such a document, such a, uh, materials uh, appeared in the heads of, of uh, our encyclopedists, how we used to call them, uh, very late. So it is December 1943. This is the date of the introduction prepared by one of the author. I will tell you about it later. Uh, and the first entries are dated the beginning of 1944. Uh, the last date which appear in one of the entry uh, is, it is May 1944. So just imagine it is this three months before the end of the ghetto. The liquidation of the ghetto took place in August 1944. So three months before they were still working uh, in the ghetto archive, people worked, worked and prepared the encyclopedia for, for us, for researchers. Uh, what we have, what we prepared, what we edited in the book, it's more than 360 entries. It's very difficult to, to say the exact number as some of the entries are doubled, tripled. Uh, some, uh, in many cases, there is no normal entry, only the, um, uh, the references, giving them the information that we should look for this information in other entry, like typical encyclopedia. Most of the entries are dedicated to persons, more than 200 are dedicated to persons. Uh, we just think this is, uh, that, that uh, it was the easiest way to write uh, the biographical information much uh, more difficult it was uh, prepare a survey of some uh, some problema so uh, encyclopedists just focus on on person and biographical information other uh, other refers to institution notions references or alternative versions uh, entries were written in two or three copies sometimes in two versions depending the version could be in different language, in German and in Polish or in Yiddish, or different, uh, different uh, text, short one, longer one, uh, mixed. For example, uh, the wife of Rumkowski's brother got three entries, one English, one, uh, one German, uh, two German, one Polish, one is very long, one is very short. Uh, Entries were written in German, most of them, also in Polish and in Yiddish. Uh, there's also a list of uh, entries which were planned, but unfortunately there was no time to finish it. Uh, but I will tell you about this planet uh, entries a little bit later. Uh, can I have another slide? Okay. I mentioned already you that introduction, the foreword uh, written by Oskar Rosenfeld, that's the person who was deported to the Łódź ghetto from Prague and from Vienna. He lived, he used to live in Vienna, then in Prague. That was a uh, journalist, a writer, a person cooperating with Herzl before the war. Uh, not young, quite old person that at that moment, um, uh, he wrote, uh, a personal diary in the ghetto, which is still not published. It's a, again, the work for us for the future. Uh, however, it's very difficult because he, he used to write in German and in very special uh, way. Uh, so it, it, it needs to be decoded as a matter of fact. Um, talking about the encyclopedia, I, I'm always trying to uh, focus you on this forward because it's got the clue of the idea itself. And what is very important, even for myself, I was reading this text many times. And each time I am reading it, I, I am ready to find out something new, something important to understand. I marked uh, one sentence from the, from the uh, introduction, from the foreword, uh, which I would like to you to focus your attention on it. 
everyday life requires certain norms of work and existence. It therefore created its own structure, own language, own, own terminology. In the ghetto, there was own language, its language, its terminology, its structure. And those people, those encyclopedists, wanted to give us the information, the definition of the ghetto itself. How do they see it? Can I have another slide, Adam, please? Because this is the uh, continuous of a uh, foreword of Oscar by Oscar uh, Rosenfeld. I will maybe not read it. Uh, you can read it by, by yourself. Uh, again, I marked the change of all social, intellectual, and economic functions brought with a change in the most commonplace conceptions. What they wanted to do for us is to, sh to uh, show us the difference, the difference between normal life and the life in the ghetto. This is a kind of legacy for us and a kind of guide how to understand the life in the ghetto. Uh, more information on the other slides. So the authors of the encyclopedia, there were 10 persons of the encyclopedia. Each of them gave its own impact and, and character on the, on the entries. Um, most of them were written by uh, Dr. Oscar Zinger from Prague, um, who was a, a head of the archive division at that moment. And he might be together with Dr. Uh, Oscar Rosenfeld, the person who initiated the project. We can only just uh, think about it in that, that, that way. But no doubtly, Oscar Zinger was the head. And uh, sometimes we can see his remark on the, on the pages of the uh, archive, archival uh, sources. Uh, he was just uh, saying that, for example, this, this uh, entry is too short, this entry is too long, it must be changed. So he, he, was, he was in charge of the project, definitely. And I, I would like to also um, focus your attention on Yusef Zelkovich, who may be known for you as a pre-war collaborator um, with the Jewish uh, Institute in, in Vilno, in, with Ivo. Uh, his uh, entries are mostly in Yiddish. He was an Yiddish-speaking person. Uh, he left all, a lot of materials except the encyclopedia. Uh, he was really very, very hard worker, and he uh, wrote reportages. In <coughs> uh, he wrote also a separate Yiddish version of the chronic, which uh, was mentioned uh, at the beginning by Adam. Uh, so these three person, I am just only focusing you uh, on the, those three names. However. Each of the authors, our encyclopedists, uh, got its important role in the project uh, as, a, as a whole. Next page, Adam, please. Uh, type of entries. Um, this typology is not uh, made by uh, uh, authors. It's a rather our, uh, our typology of, of type of entries. As I already mentioned you, the most of the entries are dedicated, are referred to people. So that's biographical, including German officials. What is, could be quite interesting that, that it is not only uh, dedicated to people living in the ghetto for Jews, but also there are a few entries. Uh, one was written, the other one not written, but there were planet uh, uh, dedicated referring to German officials. Uh, phenomena, that's something very unique and uh, very valuable for scholars to read uh, the entries dedicated to phenomena like Czapka Zakapelusz, a cap for a head, uh, which is just the ironic expression in the ghetto language referring to the mutual exchange of services. The same Talejiki Zagaugany plates for racks. Uh, Another type of entry, institutions, quite easy to write and quite easy, uh, but very, and very helpful for, uh, for the historians now because we can have the basic information about uh, ghetto institutions, where they uh, where have been established, who was the, in charge of the institution and so long, so long, so long. Uh, as, uh, very important, that there are only four um, uh, entries dedicated to the 
in not official institution, I wouldn't say illegal, but they are not official institution. It was religion, religious institution like uh, Sons of Sinai, Benai Horaf. It was written in, in uh, Yiddish. Another type, objects like Pushka. Pushka was important uh, uh, object in the ghetto, not only because it was uh, full of meat when it was de 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 developed to, to the ghetto, but then people used this Pushka to, to for example, to uh, plant the trees or vegetables uh, in their houses. Uh, New meaning of words. That's another very, very interesting for researcher um, part of uh, entries, uh, showing something which is very unique and not always we could uh, uh, find out what uh, what was the real meaning in the real. I mean the ghetto meaning of the of uh, some uh, some word like paravan connected with the death person in the hospital, for example. Uh, functions, occupations, uh, aspirants, that's the, that's the entry referred to the uh, member of the Jewish police uh, or Vidyalachka rationer, the person who just pulled the soup in the ghetto, uh, very, very important person. People were writing poems to Vidyalachka to have more soup in their bowls. And places, places, what was, uh, quite important also, and I would like to notice that places, not only the ghetto, but also places outside the ghetto, like Brzezine, Warsaw, Vienne. We don't know exactly what would be in such a, uh, I'm, I mean, the Brzezine was written, uh, the entry re referred to Brzezine was written, but we don't know if Warsaw, the planet uh, entry, Warsaw should be the ghetto Warsaw or Warsaw itself? So it's still the question and no one will answer our question, unfortunately. Uh, preparing the book, preparing the, the, pub, the edi working on the edit edition of, of the uh, encyclopedia, we were using the ghetto papers. Adam already told you how many pages there are in the state archive in, uh, in Łódź and the other archives are also full of Łódź papers. Mm, so ad editing the encyclopedia, giving the commentary to, uh, to the entries, we were using ghetto papers, we were using diaries and memoirs, we were using a lot of internet bases, we are very happy person of digital, digital era. Uh, so it, it is much easier now to be encyclopedist than uh, during the war. We are also using the pre-war sources and after-war sources. Uh, pre-war sources gave us a lot of very interesting information about people in the ghetto and the connection between them. So it was quite surprise situation for us that people uh, who knew each other from the pre-war period were also very close cooperating uh, in the ghetto. So it was like a net a kind of uh, uh, unofficial uh, organization. Another slide. Uh, our publication was the second uh, uh, in the history of, <laughs> of our publication. The first one was uh, uh, prepared by, by uh, people in the Ghetto Fighters House in late 50s. Uh, and we were, to be honest, we were using these materials a little bit because um, uh, people preparing the encyclopedia in Ghetto Fighters House probably lost four entries, uh, disappear somewhere, maybe one one day they will be found somewhere. Uh, so four of the entries were translated in our book from Hebrew, it's a very special one. Uh, Polish edition is the first publication including the whole material which were found at this moment, up to date. Uh, but one never know, maybe there will be some new entries. And last year, our friends from uh, Gizen University published the uh, German edition. So as a matter of fact, the English, the German and the Polish and the Hebrew edition are available for 
uh, for um, scholars. However, the Polish one is the first covering all possible material. Uh, you can see now the uh, example of, of the entries, how it looks like uh, in original. Uh, this is the chapka, chapka for uh, Zakapelusz, a hat for a cap. Uh, then we have uh, Talejziki Zagaugan, a shorter one, another uh, that's an uh, example of biographical entry, very short one in Yiddish. And then we have uh, to compare the three uh, pages long entry of uh, Henrik Naftalin, one of the prominent ghetto um, uh, manager. Uh, so that's, that's all about the encyclopedia, which was written and published by us. And now I would like to uh, show you the index, the next, next page, Adam, the index, the first and the last page of the notebook uh, with the index of planet entries. I choose the, a, the letter A and the letter Z, so the first and the last page. Uh, uh, the notebook is... Uh, kept in the Ghetto Fighters House archive. And for us, it is something like, you know, like, like a legacy, legacy or a kind of legacy and a guide what to do next. Because as you may notice, there's 1,400 uh, entries, planet, according to the notebook. Uh, and only 340 has been written. So the rest waits for the scholars and first person who decided, persons who decided to take care of those entries are we. And so we decided to fill the legacy to write those entries following the guides given by the archives from, from the ghetto. Uh, it won't be easy. Uh, there are a lot of challenges. Can I have another slide, the last one, Adam, please? Uh, I, cho I have chosen 10 uh, examples from the list showing you what kind of challenges is ahead of us. Uh, I uh, would like to describe you those uh, entries, though, those uh, uh, title of the entries. Uh, in, in, in uh, four types. So there are, there, there, there are uh, entries, I call it, we know what to write. So for example, the entry bridges, we know what to write. We know there were three bridges in the ghetto. We know where the bridges were. We have pictures of the ghetto. We know when the bridges were, have been built. We know when the bridges have been uh, this dismantled after the war. And there is a lot of uh, information about the bridges which can we be found in the diaries, uh, in the chronic, people are jumping from the uh, bridges and so on, so on, so on. So that's one uh, part, uh, one uh, type of entries. Another, we have no idea what does it mean. We could only guess, like digicam. We ha I have no idea at this moment, what does it mean? The question is whether we were able, we were able to find or not. Uh, the other uh, type of entry, we had, we had no idea what is it, but we happily could be able to find, like Ciocia Marisha. We had no idea what is it about. Fortunately, we could a few years ago, we were still in contact with survivors. I asked once Henio Bergman, the former um, uh, of, of uh, organization of lots in, in Israel. Henio, what is it? What does it mean? Aunt Mary, Ciocia Marysia. So he asked another person and another person. So there was a huge uh, mails going from one person to another, many, many mails. And once recall himself, oh, there was a lady who was uh, a journalist, she was a journalist and just before the war, she was uh, uh, writing advices for children in the local newspapers. That's it. So we could find out the name. It was Dora Wasserzug. She 
was a journalist. She was writing uh, advices for children in the in the Gwosporanne. And after the uh, broke of the war, she she lived in the ghetto with her mom. So luckily, we know what Chocha Marisha is. Uh, another type of uh, entry we know we know how what to write like ghetto we know what to write but we are curious what encyclopedies from the ghetto could write what was their idea of the ghetto we know exactly what to write about the wood ghetto but how interesting it would be to see what is their opinion what is their idea what is ghetto I have no idea what does mean Rumkowski te, Rumkowski te. Was it, I don't know, meetings with some very important persons, with some, his friends or his cooperator, like five o'clock in with the queen? I don't know. At this moment, we have no idea. Maybe by accident, by reading some testimony or some diary, we could find out what does it mean Rumkowski te. Uh, and subjects, sub subjects, feelings, the last I, I would like to uh, tell you about, we exactly know what to write about feelings. Uh, doctors used to uh, write prescription for, for the potato peelings. So it would be quite easy to, to feel with the information. Unfortunately, the, the diggy han can, I don't know if maybe it's Dingis Khan in, written in Yiddish, but even if we uh, define it like Dingis Khan, we have no idea at this moment what could it be referred to in the ghetto. So that's uh, all I would like to tell you, giving back floor to Adam, who will try to <laughs> finish our description of our project and the planet entries it's only the beginning the uh, well this is the uh, like uh, getting from the encyclopedia via this planet entries to the lexicon which is our future project ahead or all, all already in the in the project like in the in the work yeah. And the list, uh, thank you, Eva. And the list of plant entries, it's uh, you can all uh, you can see all in a, a publication in English and a Polish version. So we rewrite it, and you can see all the letters. And yeah, uh, maybe, maybe that's a good idea uh, to ask you if you have not uh, any uh, information about this uh, planet entries or just ideas, your ideas, ideas <laughs> what it could be. Uh, we will. Yeah. Be and as uh, Eva said, index of plant entries was a kind of uh, inspiration for our uh, project. But the experience collected uh, on the Chronicle of a Ujigetto, later the Encyclopedia of a Ujigetto project, and the list of plant entries, led us to undertake a, a huge lexicon of the Ujigetto project. So this is our yeah, recent project. And we have um, found the financial support from the Ministry of Science and Higher Education in Poland. Uh, in 2018, we found, uh, we get the grant from the ministry, uh, about 1 million złoty uh, in five years to uh, prepare and present the lexicon of a Łódź ghetto. Uh, very luckily in the same uh, competition, uh, the people from the Jewish Historical Institute get the project about the Encyclopedia of Warsaw Ghetto. So we are going in the same moment, two big encyclopedias are being prepared uh, that time. Uh, our time horizon is uh, uh, till 2000, uh, 2023. Uh, so we have to finish our work uh, till uh, 2023. But because of the coronavirus Probably, I assume that we ask ministry for one more year <laughs> uh, because we have a problem, for example, uh, for going to the Israel to archive uh, and to United States. Uh, the main aim of the project of the lexicon is to prepare and publish uh, in a hardcover book and the online uh, website a lexicon of the Ujigeto containing circa three. Uh, thousand entries. 
3,000 entries related to the history of a uh, uh, ghetto. But not only historical entries, but also related to the uh, what we call the culture uh, uh, connections of the ghetto. For example, commemoration uh, monuments or historians, uh, bio biographical notes about historians who wrote, for example, after the war, articles or books about the ghetto, like Danuta Dombrowska from the Jewish Historical Institute and uh, from Yad Vashem. And uh, our project team consists of uh, historians, linguists from the University of Łódź, archivists from the State Archive in uh, Łódź, and museum professionals from the uh, Museum of the uh, Independence Tradition Radegast Memorial uh, branch. Uh, our team is joined by collaborators from very various centers, uh, people all over Poland and all over the world uh, who has much more knowledge about very specific things connected to the ghetto uh, than we have. For example, uh, Przemek Nowicki from Izbica Kujawska, he wrote uh, uh, a very interesting article about Shloma Wiener, escaper from the Kulmhof death camp. And it, is, uh, it has no sense to write a new entry about Shlomo Wiener by myself or by Eva, because we have a Przemek and Przemek, he is an expert. So we are collecting people from all over institution, all over the world. Uh, the lexicon of the Ujgeto will be published in Polish and English. Uh, as I said, in a hardcover book, probably two or three volumes uh, and uh, online website. The website is, uh, now it's working, but uh, it's empty. We have only structure. Uh, our objectives uh, in this project, uh, our objective is to prepare the entries uh, about the ghetto, about uh, functions of the ghetto, and uh, as well as intellectual history of the ghetto. So uh, not only uh, describing the institutions, but also as Oscar Los Rosenfeld wrote in his uh, preface uh, to the encyclopedia, the history of culture in a ghetto. And uh, our uh, yeah, objective is also to publish uh, in a traditional form of encyclopedia and uh, as I said, online knowledge uh, database. Uh, because our project is partly in a, this huge bag of digital humanities <laughs> uh, uh, projects apart. Uh, in the uh, online website, um, we put the rich iconography from the ghetto, uh, as well as uh, the additional sources, uh, because uh, as you know, the encyclopedia has its own limitations. We cannot write uh, 3000 articles about history of a ghetto, but short, relatively short entries. And uh, for people uh, and uh, for researchers interested in the history of a ghetto, uh, in every entry, we will put additional documents uh, connected with this entry. Uh, our concept is to uh, continue the work uh, um, started by the uh, archivist from the ghetto. Uh, our map is a list of plant entries, uh, but we add a new knowledge, our knowledge. Uh, lexicon is to become the document uh, presenting our complete state of knowledge about the ghetto at that moment, and moment of the finish of the project, so 2023. We are complying material for the future researchers, and as I put the quotation from Oscar Rosenfeld preface, because this is our also our concept. In a future period when the ghetto will be researched, such a collection, such an encyclopedia will add to an understanding where a mere description of condition is inadequate. It's a very important legacy for, for us. Uh, our entries, we divide it into seven categories. So less than uh, we divide it in working on an encyclopedia. And that's why we use word lexicon, not encyclopedia, not to mix those, those two projects. Encyclopedia is from the ghetto and lexicon is contemporary project. Uh, we divide it into seven categories, biographies, phenomena from the ghetto, events, objects, institutions, places, and the, the other one, the biggest uh, category. Uh, our categories we developed based on the experience of working in the edition of the encyclopedia. And uh, uh, of course, the uh, explore the list of plant entries. 
uh, our entries will be uh, our entries written by us, but also we put the historical entries from the encyclopedia written in the ghetto, but some of the entries from the ghetto we already updated. <laughs> so it is very, uh, the structure is very interesting of this uh, encyclopedia, this lexicon. And the authors include contemporary historian as well as archivist uh, from the ghetto. So in the list of authors will be Oskar Rosenfeld, Oskar Zinger, and next to the Oskar Zinger, Eva Viatr and Adam Sitarek. So we are one huge team connecting those two, you know, uh, two moments from the history of, of uh, uh, Jewish people in, in Poland. Second World War, ghetto time and contemporary history. Contemporary, not the history, but the now, what is what it's going now. And uh, very short uh, description of these uh, entries. Uh, like Eva said before, the biographies about official clerks, directors, rabbis, famous rabbis from the ghetto, artists, historians uh, uh, from uh, after war period, but also people associated with the history of a, uh, of a ghetto. Uh, for example, of course, David Sierakowiak, but, but as I said, Danuta Dąbrowska, Lucian Dobroszycki, for example. Uh, phenomena from the ghetto, protekcja, patronage, wydzielaczka, but also resistance. This is very important phenomenon of the Uji ghetto, very unknown uh, compared to the Warsaw ghetto resistance. For example, uh, illegal uh, radio listening. Uh, events from the history of the ghetto, deportations, resettlement, accidents, visitation, for example, Himmler, uh, Himmler visitation from uh, June uh, 41 in the ghetto, uh, but also uh, important commemoration events after the war, for example, 65th uh, anniversary of the liquidation of the ghetto, when the, all this uh, commemoration activities started in Łódź uh, 15 years ago. Uh, objects from the ghetto, pot, salad, coins, books, pieces of art, uh, institutions from the ghetto, departments, workshops, called resorte in the ghetto, administration offices, but Jewish administration as well as German administration offices, places, uh, buildings, zones from the ghetto, for example, Marishin, the district of a, a ghetto, the boundaries, uh, but also cities, Brzezine, Vienna, Praga, Prague, and so on. Um, and the other entries. Uh, it's hard to assign one specific, which is hard to assign to one specific uh, category. And uh, we discussed very much uh, all this, uh, 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 how to write and uh, like how to prepare the lexicon. So we decided to standardize entries uh, uh, of limited size, 1500 words. Each entry contains a footnote and the bibliography references. Uh, we uh, supplement it when it's possible with iconography and uh, additional sources. Uh, we put like in Wikipedia, uh, descriptive and unifying entries. For example, deportation, C, you know, deportation from January and so on and so on. Uh, we create a, a list of tags, we call it book of tags. And uh, I, I need just three more minutes, so. <laughs> Uh, yes, because I want to say that we will have some minutes for questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when our yes. time is running, we have only 10 minutes. Okay, so two more, two more minutes. So we decided to put the internal references uh, between different entries and we use uh, word, Latin word vide because in the ghetto, Encyclopedia of the Ghetto, they use this word. So this is our contribution to their work. They use the same uh, way to reference. And uh, we decided to also to put kind of visualization of the structure network of links uh, based on the Gephi models. This is the just example, uh, because this is the structure of uh, League of Nations from uh, 1920s. But uh, we will use the Gephi visualization application to, to connect and to show how the uh, different entries connect each other and refer to each other. And this is our portal. Uh, it's not, uh, you can, we have only structure, it's empty inside, but you can uh, see it online. It's lexicongetta.uni.lots.pl. 
uh, if you are interested, like I said, I can send you a link to this uh, website. And please follow us on Facebook. And you, if any questions, just write to us. We are very wide open to all questions, all remarks, and uh, discussion because every day, every week, we are discuss this project and we are changing our minds. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Eva and Adam. It was really interesting, and uh, I think we learned a lot about really, really a great project. Great project. Um, I would like to open for discussion for questions, please. Uh, yeah, please. Me, hi. I heard a completely different talk also about, I mean, it's an amazing piece of work. It's an absolutely unbelievably large and amazing piece of work about finding the documents uh, and uh, also why there were people working in the archive and how it came to be, which was absolutely fascinating. Um, I think it was by an American uh, professor who came through London and did a talk in the evening, which I heard. And that is a story in itself, which um, obviously you didn't have time to do today, but it's an amazing story where the documents seem to be in lots of different places yeah. and, and, you know, and, and in fact, the reason that they were allowed to even do the archive, uh, because the Germans wanted some documents and they decided to put together more. So that is a story in itself, which you must document because it is just fascinating. Yeah, thank you. Judy, you wanted to ask a question? Yes, yes, I did something very, very personal. What brought the two of you to want to work on such material? That always interests me. There are so many things that historians can do. Why this? Mm. Let me use the NASA reference, curiosity. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. I, I don't know, Judy, I don't know. I, I know it's very difficult, a very tough topic and it ruins sometimes myself. I, 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 I can assure you that it's, very difficult to be a mother and to read about children in the ghetto. Yes. And I know that I must be more like pathomorphologist. I am usually using this phrase that mm -hmm. I, I, I must, I must, that, that's, that's my mm, task for the future to, uh, I don't know, to give those people faces, for example. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the, the, many, many people who got entry in the encyclopedia got their faces because we were searching, we were looking for pictures and we found the pictures. Who else You're will do it? Only we. Doing amazing things. I think it is incredible. And I, I am in awe of people who can, I mean, I work on the Holocaust as well. And I know what it's like. You come to a point where you say, okay, I'm putting this aside because I'm getting nightmares. So to deal with such hardcore material on a daily basis is amazing. You have done wonderful things. Yeah, I think as Eva said, this is kind of our, to be honest, kind of obligation. You know, the, this list of plant entries, mm -hmm. we found it by accident, really. Just looking every five of every nine PDF in the Holocaust Museum. I was boring and looking on the files, waiting for a copy, different things, and I found it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we recognized the uh, handwritten uh, note made by Oscar Zinger. So we said, this is very, it's very interesting. We should continue the idea because it was very rapidly stopped by Germans during the liquidation of a ghetto. Mm -hmm. So they leave us uh, a map, 1,300 entries. So what we can do just, you re rewrite it, prepare it. I have two questions. Thank you. Um, one question, you, you read a lot and you read a lot. Do you have some insights about mothers, about gender issues, about daily life? Uh, if you, because you read it in a perspective of years. So which conclusions you have or thoughts or insights about the ghetto that we still don't know. New insights. First, my first 
maybe it's a, not a pity answer, but uh, answer is a bravery of mothers, for example. The diary of Irene Hauser from Vienna, deported to the ghetto from Vienna with smile, a small child and the husband. And she was deported with her, uh, uh, with her child to the Helmno in Spera, 42. And the bravery of Irene is very outstanding. I, she, I will put monument to all mothers from the ghetto, really. So it's very important when we talk about gender uh, studies uh, during the Holocaust. It's important, it's enlarge our knowledge about figures, about people. Yeah. Um, and also, I would like to ask about Romkowski. Do you think that uh, these uh, materials can help to uh, know this uh, him better than we know already? Yes. In yeah. For sure. Yes. In a different way. You can give one example. For example, the way how he can cheat the Germans. Mm -hmm making statistics better on the paper. Mm -hmm. It's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's really very important. We have a hy hypothesis, for example, that he let, it's a very tragic moment, but he let deport few hundred people more during the spare. So uh, more than 1500 uh, um, I wouldn't people. agree that he let more people to be deported. He just mm -hmm. agreed to report there was less people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the number the number was not depend on him. Uh, the number of people deported uh, it was the demand of uh, German authorities. However, yeah. they agreed to put into the uh, statistical record less number. So yeah. there was less number in the ghetto but more food. More food rations after the deportation from the people who left, left in the ghetto. So this is very tricky way to, to cheat the German authorities. Okay. Um, and then another thing, not a question, but only a remark. I got yesterday um, the biography of Miriam Arel in Polish. Miriam Arel is a Holocaust survivor. She's, she lives not far away from us. She's 97 years old and she's very clear. And she, she was uh, a young girl in a uh, Lodge ghetto. And um, her biography was published in Polish in Poland. In, the, in Auschwitz, in Auschwitz, there is a center, uh, Bet Shalom. I don't know if you know it, but uh, they are also published books. And one of the books they translated from Hebrew to Polish, her biography. So uh, I can uh, make you the contact. Can you just her. repeat the name, Miriam? Miriam Harel. Miriam Harel. So I can make you the contact between okay. and, uh, yes, and the Roman in Oswiecie. We can send you the book because it's important for your uh, work. So we are collecting all possible uh, testimonies, memoirs, diaries. Okay. With a big emphasis on diaries because they are they are much more value for us. Diaries and the sources from the ghetto time. She she's, she did not write a diary, but she is an author and she wrote maybe twenty books already. Mm -hmm. And um, the book that was published in Polish, it's her biography. Biography, okay. So our time uh, is uh, ended. So if anyone wants to add something before we close the, our session, you can always write to us. Yeah, yeah we are very wide open to every, every contact. Thank you very much for a fascinating presentation. It and was excellent. You. Uh, Judy and thank you, Lena, for possibility to present our project here. And it is very nice to see people from Zdrinska Vola via, <laughs> <laughs> via Israel <laughs> website. <laughs> so, and thanks again to Professor Judy Barmel Schwartz. Yes. For this thank wonderful you. forum. And thank you all for being part of the forum, and thank you to Dr. Lea Ganor for being a marvelous forum coordinator, bringing in so many people into the forum and being so active and having such wonderful ideas and carrying them out. Okay, thank you very much. 
it's a privilege for me and uh, I hope to see you all in our next meeting in our mini conference I will send you everything and also the links to uh, these uh, sessions on YouTube thank you very much thank have you. a lovely thank evening thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. thanks again bye. all of you bye 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 bye